In the last video, we looked at what is convolutional neural network. If you have not seen it, I highly recommend watching that before you continue on this video. Today, we are going to do image classification of 60,000 small images. And this data set is coming from TensorFlow library itself. It's called CIFAR10 database. It has various objects such as aeroplane, ship, frog, horse, etc and we will be doing image classification using convolutional neural network so we'll straight away jump into coding and then in the end uh, i have an exercise for you so make sure you watch till the end and you do the exercise on your own the data set that we are going to use in this video has 60,000 32 by 32 colored images with three rgb channels and we'll be doing a classification into one of the 10 categories so these are all the 10 categories that we have i have loaded some essential libraries here and the first thing i'm gonna do is load the cfar 10 database into my jupyter notebook so when you call this load data method what you get as a return value is this so you have x train you have y train and then you have x taste y taste x taste y taste and i'll just quickly check the shape of the x train you see that the training samples are 50000 each sample is 32 by 32 image and 3 is for rgb channels now let's look at the test so in the test we have 10000 images so this data set is kind of decent size you know it is not too small now i want to check each of the training samples so when you of course do this x train let's say zero you know you get this three dimensional array 32 by 32 into three you know rgb channels uh i want to just quickly plot this to see you know how this thing looks so you can do matplotlib you know matplotlib we have already imported here as plt and this has a function called i am show and you get this is a, actually a frog and if you do one this is a truck but the image is pretty big so i want to just control the size of the image so you know when the Im image is little smaller you can clearly see that this is a truck and this is a frog just for convenience i'm going to write a function called plot sample here and this function is taking x and y and index and printing that particular uh, image sample so here it will be this and i want to also on x label i want to print the label basically whether it's a frog or a ship now i know that the labels are basically 0 to 10 so aeroplane will be 0 automobile will be 1 and so on so i'll just define the list variable called classes to be this okay and then uh, we can use this classes here classes okay how do we use it so let's think about this so we need to analyze first the y actually you know so let's check what is there in the y so if you do y train dot shape you get 50000 samples and one dimensional array so let's just quickly check the first five samples so what i notice is these are the numbers you know 6 will be for what okay 6 is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 is frog then 9 we saw it was a ship so 9 is a ship but this is a two dimensional array actually we don't need two dimensional array here because we just need direct uh, category right so i'm going to reshape this particular 
uh, wide range so i what i will do is so see right now it looks like this okay now i will do if you know about numpy arrays you know that to reshape y train you can just call y train dot reshape and the way you want to reshape is the first dimension which is 10,000 you want to keep it as it is so when you don't want to change that dimension you just say minus one and the second dimension is you want to flatten this so instead of six being an array you want a simple six so then you will just leave this blank and as a result what will happen is now when you do y train 5 okay it is saying oh i need to do reshape actually okay so you notice the difference instead of two dimensional array now this is a one dimensional array perfect so now simply if i have classes array like this and in that if i pass let's say 9 I get truck okay uh, so I can then use that index here and that index will be y of index okay so this will be y of index and I execute this and now when I say plot sample let's say in my training sample and I here I will do y train. Let's say I give zero. So for zero, I get frog. See, this x label is just printing this particular label. And if you do, let's say one, you get a truck. This is a truck, it's not a ship. Maybe I misspoke, but it's a truck. So nine number is truck, eight number is ship. So you can check various samples what the sample this is also a truck see this is a truck then this is a deer and so on so this is a just quick data exploration part that we did now uh, we want to normalize our data we saw in our previous tutorials that whenever you have an image you want to um, divide uh, each pixel value by 255 because the pixel value ranges from 0 to 255 for each of the channels R, G and B. And if you divide it by 255, you will be normalizing it into a 0 to 1 range. So let's again quickly check this. You see the values here are 103, 59 and so on. Okay. Now, if I do this. You see? See, this is the power of NumPy array. You can just divide it by 255 and it will divide every element in the entire array. So now I can simply say x train is x train divided by 255. X taste is okay. So the values are normalized. Now we'll build a simple artificial neural network first to train the model i want to see the performance of how artificial neural network works and then we will do a convolutional neural network in one of the previous tutorials we did gpu performance for the same cfar 10 uh, data set so i'm going to use that notebook it is on my github here and i'll just copy paste some code from there so here uh, we build a simple artificial neural network. So this is the same neural network I will build and see how it performs. So here, you see, it's very simple. The input uh, layer is a flatten layer. It's a first layer, which accepts the shape of 32 by 32 by three. Then we have two uh, deep layers, uh, one having 3000 neurons, the other having 1000 neurons and the last layer is having 10 uh, categories because we have total 10 categories right see this is like 10 so when you train this neural network it will use a dense 
artificial neural network with all these parameters optimizer is SGD and there is pass categorical cross entropy value as an input in that uh, tutorial by the way I use a categorical cross entropy and if you want to know the difference between categorical and sparse categorical then see I have this nice image that can explain you so here uh, whenever uh, you have let me just go in a presentation mode so whenever you have um, your y as one hot encoded vector so let's say you have ship here which is number nine and if your y is something like this which is one hot encoded you will use categorical cross entropy but if y is directly a value which is number eight you use sparse categorical cross entropy in that video of gpu performance we converted into categorical that's why we use categorical but here we are directly using the value 8 and so on and that's why we are using sparse categorical cross entropy here after the training uh, you see that accuracy i am running just five epochs but accuracy is pretty low 48 percent you see 48.58 percent on training samples when you evaluate it on test samples it is 47 percent so artificial neural network is performing really bad uh, on this data set with five epochs i have also printed here a classification report and this classification report gives precision recall and f1 score on each of the classes so for example this nine nine is what truck or a ship maybe ship no it's a truck actually okay so for truck class the precision is 59% recall is 48% and you can see this matrix is if you don't know about precision recall and F1 score again in my this tutorial series mm, there is a video on what these terms are so it is better if you watch these videos in sequence now we are going to use CNN uh, to improve the performance of this model so how do you use CNN well in our previous video uh, we saw that CNN so let me pull that presentation here so CNN will have a um, couple of layers so those layers would be usually you will have convolutional layer then you have ReLU which is the activation and then pulling then again convolution ReLU and pulling and then you have a dense network so you will keep the dense network in front of your current dense network all we are going to do is add some convolution and a pulling layers so let's uh, do that so let me just copy this code here okay so here this will be cnn and so you will have some cnn layers here okay and this will be your dense network so when uh, you are in the middle layer you don't need to specify the shape because the network can figure it out automatically and just to keep things simple i'm just going to keep only one dense network because my cnn would have done most of the work so i don't need so many neurons and so many deep layers okay and I'm going to use a softmax function here. This is one of the popular activation function. The difference between uh, softmax and um, sigmoid is that so softmax will normalize your probability. So it will, um, see if you have probabilities like, let's say your two classes, class one is, let's say it gives 0.45 value and class two gives whatever, 0.67 value. If you use softmax you get this as an output uh, you, if you use sigmoid sorry then you get this as an output but if you use softmax then you get this divided by this as an output so what happens is now you are normalizing let me just show you 
quickly so you get an idea so you're normalizing it to a range between 0 to 1 so your total sum basically will be z1 so if you sum this point this one and this one you get total sum as 1 so that is softmax but if you are using sigmoid uh, and if you sum this up you don't necessarily get 1 all the time now in this code here i'm going to add first convolutional layer and then the max pooling layer uh, this goes back to our presentation earlier uh, so it's pretty straightforward convolution is uh, detecting the features in your image now when we saw this presentation for the image of 9 in the previous video we saw that uh, we can have this kind of three filters so the first one is detecting the loopy pattern and the second one is detecting the vertical edge which is the middle part third one is detecting the tail the best thing about convolutional neural network is you don't need to tell it what what the filters are it will figure out the filters for you you only need to tell the filter size and how many filters you want see in this case we had three filters one two three so if you look at this image we get these three filters stack filters feature maps here we will use you know just random like maybe 32 filters so this can detect 32 different features or different ages in your image and then the actual filter size is specified here so let's say we are using 3 by 3 filter see here also we had 3 by 3 filter this green box so that's what this is and then you need to specify activation which is ReLU okay so here I have activation as ReLU and then my input shape is 32 by 32 by 3 okay because that is one image so going back to the architecture once again all right what did we have we had convolutional and ReLU and then we had pulling so we have convolution and ReLU and you have pulling so pulling I'm going to specify a max pooling of 2 by 2 max pooling is very popular uh, pooling uh, method people use average pooling as well and um, for activation also you know ReLU is quite popular it is less expensive to calculate now you can have only one layer or you can have multiple doesn't matter you know like you kind of figure this out by trial and error so just for fun I am going to have another set of convolution and max pulling layer. Okay. So, see, here we had like convolution pulling, convolution pulling. So, that's what we have now. Now, we do our usual model compile thing. This is something we have been doing in all our videos. You need to specify optimizer, loss, and matrix. I already explained why you use pass categorical cross entropy here. There are various optimizers, SGD, Adam, and Adam. Adam is the kind of popular one uh, that gives the good accuracy. So that's the reason I'm using it here. And I need to say CNN actually here. Okay. And then I will do uh, CNN.fit and I will run it for 10 epochs. There are 50,000 images to train, so it's gonna take some time, so please have some patience. Here you saw that after 10 epochs, it gave me 83% accuracy. Actually, if you compare it with ANN, see, after five epochs, I get 73% accuracy. In ANN, after five, I got only 48%. So you can see that using CNN helps you tremendously. And now I will uh, 
test this out on my test set and here you know i got 70 percent accuracy which is pretty good okay uh if you train you for more epochs uh, you can probably get more accuracy and you can do a little fine tuning but for the images which are like this which are kind of you see these images are like kind of random actually this is actually a tough data set uh, and in this kind of complex tough data set also we get 70 percent accuracy which is pretty nice you know i'm like kind of happy with that so good job you just built your first uh, convolutional neural network well done i hope you are also typing this code as you watch this video uh, so coding in parallel with me is going to be definitely useful now i will do uh, plotting of some samples uh, so let's see okay we got some error and i think this is happening because we did not reshape you know we had to reshape our y test because our y test okay before executing this let me show you it is a two-dimensional array i want to convert it into one dimension so if you do this so it is now one dimensional array and in my y test i want to see what is my first image okay my first image is ship now let's use our model to predict this and see how it performs so what i am going to do now is i will just say I will predict all x test samples and I will get y predicted values. So if you do y predicted, by the way, the values in each of these elements are actually probability distribution between 0 and 1. It is using softmax. And you want to find out which element is the max. So for that, you can use argmax function okay so the way argmax works is if you do let's say np dot argmax see let me just quickly show you you know why it gave one because 12 is the maximum element and the index of 12 is one see if i do this one let's say I make this one then say it is getting two so that's what it is doing so here if i supply let's say y pred zero then the index is five which means number five is the maximum element uh, i'm going to convert this into y classes so what i will do is i will say okay y classes is equal to I'll use list comprehension in uh, Python. So the way you do that is, it's like running a for loop. So for element in Y predicted, uh, you're computing argmax for each of these. So you know, like what you get as a result is something that you can compare with Y test. So now if I have Y test here, you see, this is how so the first sample it got wrong it was five it got three but see second third fourth it got right and then see it will make some errors okay because our accuracy test accuracy is 70 percent so it's fine all right so now we already saw that test sample one is ship which is this eight okay and if you look at now classes you know we have this classes what is classes classes is just a simple list of all the classes and if you supply y classes one see so this is the actual value and this is the predicted value so for zeroth element first element it got it right if you look at zeroth element it would have made a mistake so it was let's say cat and it said it's a dog but even 
for you it is hard to recognize that this is a cat right so cnn making mistake is probably okay here because this image is very very difficult if you look at let's say zero one two three the third image third image is aeroplane see it's flying like aeroplane and if you look at three see aeroplane so here it did not make a mistake i also printed a classification report using y test and y classes so now using cnn you're getting better numbers see your f1 score is overall better here 80 per 81 percent here is less 50 percent 70 percent and so on but when you looked at simple ann the score was uh, quite low i know i did only five epochs but even if you try 10 epochs you still get lower score in ann and better score in cnn in cnn also computation is less because we are using max pooling layer and that reduces the dimension the jupyter notebook that we covered in this video is uploaded on my github i am going to provide this link in the video description so make sure you check the video description and then in the end uh, what we are going to do is uh, i think it's not this one. it's this one yeah so it is this particular notebook and the link is in the video description and if you go towards the end there is an exercise for you so what you have to do is and by the way this is the most interesting part of this tutorial i i always say that exercises are the most important thing just by watching videos you're not going to learn anything you have to practice it practice makes the man or woman perfect so in one of the previous video we did handwritten digits classification for mnist data set and i have this uh, notebook here so what i want to do what i want you to do is take this notebook uh, and do the same digit classification using cnn this one is using ann okay artificial neural network see here and you have to just use a uh, cnn and just see how the accuracy and the classification report improves when you use cnn after you have worked on your solution you can match your solution with my solution by clicking on this solution link so i hope you're liking this deep learning tutorial series so far if you do please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends i'm trying to make this this tutorial series very very simple so that even a total new beginner can understand so please check out my previous videos if you have not already going in sequence is important because i am covering the topics one by one um, so please watch everything practice it and i wish you all the best and thank you for watching